if you uh, if you need to make a phone call or use the restroom, now's the time because my my uh, presentation is more personal in nature and is not academic. And I just learned a lot from these first two presentations. <clears throat> um, in many respects, the Carter School is the best kept secret in the Old Dominion. I'm trying to change that, and uh, this symposium is is uh, going to be a great record for what this school does and uh, for us to realize and learn more, which I've already done this morning, about two great Americans, Jimmy and Rosalind Carter. As a non-historian and non-academic Carter School cheerleader, I want to share uh, personal memories and talk a little bit about Jimmy Carter's very public life as a practicing Baptist. As everyone knows, he, he led Bible studies in Plains, Georgia. Everybody knows that. But he also led them at the Naval Academy in a submarine and at Washington's uh, First Baptist Church on 16th Street when he was president. <clears throat> First of a little detour, when I talk to high school government students, I tell them about one of my personal failures in an attempt to talk them out of making the same mistake. In 1976, I was eligible to vote in my first presidential election but did not do so. I have no idea why, except that I was 19. That bugs me. I would love to have had a perfect lifetime voting record, and I'm pretty sure I would have voted for Jimmy Carter. Uh, so becoming, uh, I've become somewhat of a voting evangelist, and, and it's one way I've come to terms with my mistake. And in the recent years, pat ourselves on the back a little bit. In the previous administration, I'm proud to say, uh, we have left voting age Virginians simply no excuse not to vote. It's an annual opportunity here in the Commonwealth. In fact, you can vote today, and you can vote up until uh, November 7th, one time. And uh, not speaking for him, of course, but I think it's safe to say that Jimmy Carter would want you to vote in this fourth year of our four-year cycle that is the lowest turnout year in our, in our state. Second, uh, some things you hear growing up uh, make an impact and stay with you. What sticks with you is a bit of a mystery. I've been doing this delegate work for a long time, but did not grow up in a particularly um, political family. I don't remember uh, talking about politics at the dinner table, except maybe when one of my grandfathers on opposite sides of the political spectrum, a Roosevelt guy and a Hoover guy, wanted to pontificate. My maternal grandfather was a Great Depression farmer in a very uh, regular conservative Methodist goer whose two sons, both World War II veterans, went into the ministry when they came home. He believed that Roosevelt saved the country. He generally considered himself a Democrat and eventually lived with some remorse after voting against John F. Kennedy due to the Catholic issue. He told, us, he told us, bring it kids, all of us know this story because he regretted his vote uh, uh, even as he was driving away from the polling place. So despite my personal voting malfeasance, Jimmy Carter was the first president I paid attention to. My grandparents loved him, the farmer connection, the Navy service, the Sunday school teaching, and the born-again Christianity were the whole package for them. I remember when uh, Carter became the target of harsh criticism. While personally I was kind of open to hearing it, or at least wanted to know more and wanted to know both sides, uh, my grandmother would not have anything to do with it. She defended Jimmy Carter throughout his term and for the rest of his life uh, when, he, when she heard criticism. So there is a lot of scholarship I know about religion of our country's founders and our greatest leaders. I've read a little bit of it, and it's a subject that interests me. For, for sure, Christianity was a major part of what made Jimmy Carter Jimmy Carter. He kept his faith. He prayed to God for guidance. He credits it, he credits it with helping him to do his job. He was raised in the church. The church was the center of his family's social life. The church was the center of his community's life in the small town. He said, quote, our church life provided a foundation for most, almost everything we did. And my faith as a Christian has provided the necessary stability in my life, but stability is not exactly the right word. 
because to have faith in something is an inducement not to dormancy, but to action. To me, to me, faith is not a noun, but also a verb. It's not just a noun, but also a verb. Protestant churches are um, famous for their splits, two sides seeking denominational purity. This goes on even today. Uh, young Jimmy Carter was an early witness in his small town Baptists were split on civil rights. The majority view was the Bible mandates separation of the races. So the Baptist church in Little Plains split uh, and as a strong influence to a young Carter. His mother lived her belief that all people are equal. Uh, she wasn't making speeches. Uh, people saw it in her actions. His dad probably held the prevailing view of, of white men of the day. And Jimmy Carter... Um, Brian, he, he lived his faith without offering up pious prayers in public. He did not use the Bible as a battering ram or to shut the door on an argument, things we see in current times. He was, however, unashamed, unashamed to rely on his personal prayer life and the values he learned at home. Uh, my guess is his approach in life helped to lead to his great accomplishments and possibly contributed to his political uh, failures or defeat. He didn't do populism particularly well, as was mentioned earlier. The successful politicians, and uh, uh, arguably, need to offer a little red meat to the base at some level. You have to be somewhat of a politician, be uh, po uh, populist to be successful. Engineers are really bad at that. I, in my private life, I've worked for a lot of engineers, and they have the answer. They usually have the answer. Uh, and um, so you, I've spent a lot of time explaining to them why things won't work like that, even though it makes sense, makes perfect sense, but it can't, we can't do that. So um, I think he had that problem a little bit. He came along just before the rise of the religious right and political life. Maybe his openness to sharing his faith helped create a kind of Baptist backlash. Uh, many uh, didn't want this self-proclaimed Christian to be the model Christian in the public square. The, the behavior of the, today's uh, so-called Christian politicians is hard to square with the public faith as lived by Jimmy and Rosalind Carter. In his book, uh, Living Faith, Carter says, uh, during my first campaign for the presidency, I was taken aback when evangelist Jerry Falwell condemned me because I claimed to be a Christian. Further, he wrote, uh, a high official of the Southern Baptist Convention came to the Oval Office to visit me. As he and his wife were leaving, he said, we are praying, Mr. President, um, that you will abandon secular humanism as your religion. This was a shock to me, he said. So when you read uh, Jimmy Carter's biography, you, you understand why he was shocked. Uh, I mentioned earlier his upbringing. He was a product of his Sunday school teaching, Father Stricta. Um, teachings and his mother's lived religious life in the Deep South. I would say his mother took Jesus' teaching to heart. Uh, she treated uh, black neighbors and friends uh, equally in all things in a very unequal pre-civil rights rural Georgia. In a town where almost every white man was a member of the White Citizens Council, Jimmy Carter, after turning 11 years in the Navy, <clears throat> coming back to town, refused to join under a lot of pressures, uh, refused to join the White Citizens Council and lost business as a consequence. Uh, writes Carter, love, quote, is possible among those who are closely related, among strangers, allied by a common dream of faith, and even between people who begin, to who begin by despising each other, but find a way to see the image of God in each other's humanity. So, you know, we need more people like Jimmy and Rosalind Carter in public life now more than ever. If he were here today, we would ask him about the atrocities being committed in the Middle East and elsewhere. And he made peace in his time. Um, maybe it was just negative peace. I don't know. Maybe not positive peace, but he made peace in his time. We must make peace in ours. Um, because we are humans... And this was just mentioned. We have learned that peace is really a process, a way of life. We can't stop because it's never finished. It must be nurtured. We must fight complacency so that we are not surprised 
by what humans are capable of doing. That is why this school, with their names attached to it, is so important, so very important. So that's why we can be proud of the school and the names that it's attached that's attached to it. Um, so thank you for everyone who put this together. And, and um, sorry for my non-academic uh, speech here. <laughs> and I look forward to learning more about this remarkable man, his partnership with Rosalind, his success in the Middle East, his taking flack for the harder non-populist path on the Panama Canal. And um, maybe some of you scholars can um, dig a little deeper to reveal how Jimmy Carter's faith made him the man he is and how it shaped his approach to the most important work done by a president, which is, of course, peacemaking. Thanks very much. Thank you.